to see. Well, let's see. <laughs> we can't spend it. We have uh, that. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Uh, we just need to keep, keep you up to date as to how we're doing financially. Uh, we have eight thousand dollars in our revolving account. Yep. We have five thousand two hundred eighty dollars in a consultant revolving account. We have seven hundred and fifty-four dollars in our expense account. And a payroll account of four thousand nine hundred and twelve dollars. We're total of eighteen thousand nine hundred and fifty-eight dollars. Budgets for the expenses and the budgets yeah, okay, for the payroll. Right. And then the expenses are five thousand. Mm -hmm. That's uh, uh, giving us overall total of six thousand five hundred and twenty dollars. of our case number 1402, Mark and April Bernhardt, regarding the dog care. As I indicated before, <coughs> uh, we had some letters, and I don't believe we read them into the record. No, we did not. Okay, so I'm going to read them in the record before we... Okay. Uh, this is a memo to the Zoning Board of Appeals from the Health Department. Health Department has reviewed the provided application and plan. The existing septic system has a Title V inspection dated September 12, 2011. The septic design plans for, are for a two-bedroom residence and 1,500 square feet of retail space for a total septic system design flow of 375 gallons per day. The proposed use of, of two bedrooms and 30 dogs exceeds the existing design flow at this site. State Title V 310 CMR 15.416 regarding design flow requires a per kennel flow of 50 gallons per day. Previous applications have demonstrated that expansion of the system is not an option at this time. Please contact the health department with any questions. Hmm? That is from the Board of Health. And that was dated November 20th. Was that before our last meeting? Okay. I, I like to uh, 
This letter is from Brett Baislett, the conservation agent, and dated November 21st, 2013. Regarding case 14 02, special print application to allow a non conforming dog care facility at 317 and 321 Haverhill Street, map 16, parcel lot 11, by Grenier Associates, owned by Cosign and Design Realty Trust. Chairman Thurston, members of the Zoning Board of Appeals, the Conservation Department has reviewed the above subject and application proposed conceptual site plan for the Hydrant Regency Dog Care. Center by Thomas Mayo Associates, dated November 1, 2013, and offers the following comments. The property as depicted in the submitted plan appears to differ in that currently a steel storage container is erected in a semi-permanent installation as well as a gravel parking equipment storage area exists adjacent to Bachelor Brook. Two, jurisdictional wetland resources areas are located on the property but not depicted on the submitted plans. These regulated resource areas appear to be 250-foot riverfront area of bordering the yep. submitted plans. Riverfront area of Bachelor Brook. Bordering land subject to flooding. D DEP approved groundwater protection area zone to 100 foot buffer zone to bordering vegetated wetlands and bordering vegetated wetlands. Proposed activities of these de this development would be subject to review under the Wetlands Protection Act, the town wet town's wetlands protection bylaw, and possibly the floodplain bylaw. The project submitted does not contain enough information to determine the applicability of the stormwater management and erosion control bylaw. The applicant should be prepared to provide the necessary information for compliance to be determined. Four, the submitted application and plans lack any details relating to a stormwater management facilities or any mythology to accomplish in infiltration of stormwater. Five, the proposed project lies within the Municipal Water Supply Protection District 4.11 Mass MWSPD. As indicated, the Municipal Information Mapping Access Pro Program. <coughs> Six, the housing of dogs on the property would appear to create a condition that has the potential to contribute to water and groundwater contamination by the generation and handling of dog wastes. The application provides no specifics on waste handling. This is a particular concern given that a 40-pound dog produces 4.8 billion, 7.8 7 billion fecal chloroform bacteria per day, and that is only one dog, not 30, as is proposed to be housed at this facility. Seven, a review of the conservation department's files reveals that issued permit are lacking for the storage container and installation and the parking and equipment storage area located in the floodplain of Bachelor Brook. The Conservation Office requests the Zoning Board of Appeals consider requiring what the stormwater be appropriately managed in detail if the applicant proceeds with this proposal. Due to the lack of significant information regarding protection of wetland resource areas, including groundwater, both quantity and quality, the floodplain impacts this Conservation Department cannot recommend the proposed project at this time and request the opportunity to review and comment on any further submittals you know, at, if the process continues. Thank you for the opportunity to comment. Okay. And then we have a letter from the Board of Selectmen dated November 19th. Yeah. 
location of 317 and 321 Haverhill Street. The Board of Selectmen reviewed the application for 317 and 321 Haverhill Street during their November 18, 2013 meeting. The Board voted to recommend considering the application because the location may be a good fit for a dog care facility. The Board noted that the applicant will need to make sure a dog waste is disposed of properly and not allowed to go into the nearby stream. <coughs> As you recall, uh, at the last meeting, we sought clarification about the zoning board's ability to grant uh, a change of use, perhaps, in our opinion, around the fact that your property had a half of residential uh, non-conforming use and half business use, and we were very concerned that that would compromise our ability to do that. And we saw an opinion from Judy Pickett. That's the opinion that the chairman is going to read. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is, this is to uh, Donald Thurston, Chairman of the Board of Appeals, uh, Raleigh Board of Appeals. It's from Judy Pickett, dated December 5th, 2013. And Carbon Carby, my the W. Egan Town Administrator, regarding 317 and 321 Haverhill Street, applica application pursuant to Section 521. An application has been filed for the property located at 317 and 321 Haverhill Street seeking a special permit for expansion or change to a non conforming use pursuant to Section 521 of the Raleigh Zoning Bylaw. The law, which contains two buildings, is located in the retail district. One of the buildings is a residential dwelling, a non-conforming use within the retail district. The other building has been used as a retail bookstore, a use permitted within the retail district. The applicant proposes a dog care facility which would be classified as a kennel pursuant to the zoning bylaw. The dog care facility would be located within the building that was used as a bookstore. A veterinary hospital and kennel is allowed only within the business light industry district. See Raleigh's only bylaw section 4.7.2 section D. It is a prohibited use within all of the districts, including the retail district. See table of use regulations section 4.1.1 and section 4.6. Section 5.2.1 is not applicable to this proposed change in use from a retail bookstore to a kennel, as the bookstore was use was permitted within the retail district. This is not an expansion of a non-conforming use or a change of a non-conforming use to another non-conforming use. The proposed application seeks to change a permitted use, retail bookstore, to a prohibited use kennel. This is not a non-conforming lot, but a non-conforming use of one of the buildings. It is not even possibly to apply the standards set out in section 5.2.1 because the standards are not applicable to changing a permitted use to a prohibited use. The application should have been rejected at the, at the, and the check returned, but it's my understanding that although this was discussed with the applicant, he refused to withdraw the application. The hearing has now commenced and has been con continued to December 19, 2013. I would caution the board to not attempt to apply the standards set out in 5.2.1, but to make a detailed findings of that regarding prior and proposed use of two buildings and uses allowed in the retail district. In commendings related to those findings in section 5.2.1, standards and draft your decision. Do you have any questions? Can I refer you? Mr. Chairman, could you also, on the bottom of page one of, uh, 
Attorney Pickett's letter, there were two footnotes. Uh, okay. the, the, the second footnote uh, relates more specifically to our need here. Um, in the last paragraph of the memorandum, it says it is not even possible to apply the standards to set out in Section 5. The standards set out in Section 521 because the standards are not applicable to changing a permitted use to a prohibitive use. Then it has a footnote 2. Could you read footnote 2? The only possible zoning solution would require the granting of a use variance, except use variances are not authorized within the town Raleigh zoning bylaw, except where local bylaws shall expressly permit variances for use. No variance may authorize a use or activity not otherwise permitted in the district in which the land or structure is located. Mass General Laws, Chapter 40A, Section 10, First Paragraph. Raleigh has no express provision allowing for use variances. Thank you. <coughs> we'll supply you with all these so that you can review. Today I received a packet from attorney Alan Brennan. I believe it contains the same material with maybe a few additional forward fans that was sent to me by Lisa. I have nothing further to add to the memo that was sent on November December 5th. in generating an opinion affirming that also the board believes is likely to be the deal breaker for this application. At our meeting December 19th, we will, we will advise the applicant of the constraints under which the board must operate on this matter and discuss with them their options. As you may well know, there are other significant issues relating to health department, conservation commission concerns about the site, which additionally may have made the application a new point unless otherwise addressed successfully by the applicant. Attorney Grenier, not having alerted his client to these matters as of this date, and proceeding to provide you with information on the application that does not include the view or status of these issues, would seem to be seeking consideration for a further delayed process of this service. <coughs> Board did provide the applicant for an immediate study written copy of the above HD and CONCOM concerns immediately following the original hearing and dated November 21. While the board is always <coughs> willing to provide the applicant with the opportunity to remedy any issues regarding their application that might otherwise be surmountable over a reasonable period of time, I believe the zoning regulations which apply essentially tie the board's hands, despite the lot of support from the community, and that full work will remedy using this site is available to the applicant. However, the full board will review the entire matter <coughs> at our coming night meeting. While regrettable, the board wishes the applicant has performed more due diligence in their effort to get out the applicability or lack thereof of this site for their needs before bringing forth the application despite the advice in that point from Chairman Thurston. Can we ask, after that meeting, um, 
uh, in, in this letter, in this response to Attorney Pickett, I included a comment in which I noted uh, that I sent you to the only email address I could find for you guys at your website, um, an email dated um, November 22nd, was the day after the hearing, in which I addressed the, the importance of these two matters. Did you ever receive that? For me, I don't know. It, it wouldn't have gone. I couldn't have found oh, an email address no. for Attorney Grenier. I, I would have forwarded it immediately to Alan. So, so you just didn't have it. I probably didn't receive it, or could have gone to my spam folder. But, yeah. but if I, you know, I would have immediately forwarded it over to Alan, so that way he can. Well, our I'm my sorry. my intent was to alert you to the health department and concom issues which existed in front of the board last month yes. uh, and to give you an opportunity to address them because I, I, I think they're critical issues. Okay, yes. Um, before tonight's meeting. Tonight, I, and I sent you, and I can read you that email, I'll give you that email. Well, let me be specific. The Conservation Commission ought to be aware that the statute provides that their application is the one that comes last. First, we have to have all of the other permits in line before we go to the Conservation Commission. That's right in the statute. Okay, that's for a second. This fellow is not putting in a veterinary hospital. As I heard that memorandum, they referenced the fact that we were putting in a veterinary hospital and they cited a section. In our application, we state we are not putting in a veterinary hospital. We are only putting in a dog care facility. So insofar as the opinions based upon whether we're putting in a veterinary hospital, it's incorrect because we are not putting in a veterinary, veterinary hospital. Veterinary hospitals and kennels are allowed in the district. This is a kennel, we realize. It's not a We are a kennel. Hospital. We're not a veterinary hospital. Right. Right. The, the attorney bracket, uh, attorney uh, Pickett, does not make any reference to a veterinary hospital. If it were specific. I heard a veterinary hospital. I, I heard, heard no. Do you want me to bring the lunch? Yeah. Yeah. Nope. Well, we didn't. We weren't furnished with a copy of that in advance, so I, no, I can only rely on, on what I heard, and we heard specifically there was a veterinary hospital involved. The proposed and application theory. seeks to change a permitted use to a prohibited use Wait a kennel. Wait a I want to make it clear that we, our application provides that we're going to remove all dog waste by a third party vendor. So there's no issue as to whether there's going to be Excuse dog waste. Excuse involved. me, sir. The applicant proposes a dog care facility which would be classified as a kennel. That's in quotes. Pursuant <coughs> to zoning bylaw, the dog care facility would be located within a building that was used as a bookstore. A veterinary, quote, a, quote, a, quote, veterinary hospital and kennel, end of quote, is allowed only within the business-like industry. So, you've got a veterinary hospital and a kennel. The two entities that are allowed in the in the uh, business like industry. Well, thanks for the clarification. We didn't I didn't hear it that way. I all I heard was veterinary hospital, yeah. that's all. Well if you if you could be provided with a copy of the letter. Mm -hmm. should, since it's my letter. Right. Yeah. Well, Uh, and it's addressed 
Minnesota Zoning Board of Appeals, Raleigh Town Hall. I am a resident of the town of Essex, choosing to do business with Hydrant Regency. We have a 10-year-old black dog. We required him, acquired him when he was released from the seeing eye and a year old for medical reasons. This medical issue is still has to be dealt with. The success of his quality of life and longevity has been greatly contributed to by Mark and April's care. We choose, chose Hydrant Agency after a long search and much trial and error with similar businesses in our own town. Mark and April run hard, go the extra mile in their care for dogs and it reflects in the way they run their business. They are very on top of the cleanliness of the facility and the dogs that stay with them. They give the utmost care to the condition of the yard. They don't use harsh chemicals for safety of the dogs as well as the environment that they work and live in. We were with a facility that was based in the industrial park. I left after a week's trial. For the safety of my dog, I will not board him in a facility that the staff leaves the premises for the night. They are living beings. What happens in the event of medical emergency, fire, or flooding? We tried another facility, too crowded, not clean, and nowhere near the attention have we received at Hydra. I had no confidence in their ability to handle medical emergency with my dog. Having Hydra agencies business in Raleigh is also an asset to the revenue for the town. I shot at market basket, bank of TV, and you take out a royal orchard, El Tapatar, yeah, El Tapato, and Bradley Tavern. My husband can tie in a quick haircut of Rockles on his way to and from dropping the dog off. I work out in a town of fitness. Hydrant Regency is the missing piece of, to our puzzle, and the people rally while juggling life, it may be. And it may hit many commitments. Many commitments. Mark and April are incredible people, generally caring for their dogs and their customers. They are contributing members of the community with aiding the dog offices, while not only Raleigh, but Ipswich as well. They make our and the people from Raleigh's hectic life a whole lot easier. I feel the town of Raleigh would be doing a huge disservice to themselves, as well as the hydrant community by not letting Mark and April continue to conduct their business in a new location in Raleigh. Please feel free to contact us if we can give any further assistance. Thank you. Thomas and Janice Burgess. <coughs> and we have one from Joel and Judy Carroll. We'd like to express our strong support for the hydrogen <coughs> Hydrant Regency's petition coming before your board. We have been frequent patrons of the Hydrant Regency for many years and have found that they provide a service that can't be duplicated anywhere else. Theirs is a place to take our golden retriever, Jesse, and know that he will be cared for in a safe and loving environment. Mark and April are highly focused on the needs of the dogs with whom they have been entrusted but it is also easy to see that they are sensitive to the neighborhood in which they are a part. Hydrant Regency is a tremendous asset to the community, and we urge the board to recognize the work of that asset and do its best to preserve it. Okay, that takes care of those. Light of uh, those letters, I feel that uh,
think would be best to deal with withdrawing your application. Don't have that have you see it, have, have you withdraw it, then have us deny it. I will mean, withdraw it. He's asking you to withdraw your application. I will mean, let him deny it. Um, I'll speak for Mark. He's uh, very upset about this. Uh, we had thought that after spending seven years, as he has, in the town of Raleigh, and conducted the business as he has, and generated the public support that he has, that we have received a more favorable response. If the board chooses to vote against him, then vote against him, and he's got a right of appeal. He's got a right to take his business elsewhere. We understand that. Uh, Mr. Chairman, um, would other members pair, care to offer an opinion? Yes, I would. Please. Well, last time we were here, <clears throat> in looking at the bylaw, for the first time that I had to deal with it, I thought the bylaw was in a gray area or, or, or an ambiguous area. And uh, subsequent to that, uh, I reviewed it a number of times myself. And I came to the conclusion that it's not at all ambiguous. It's actually quite clear. The bylaw says you can do two things. You can continue a prior existing non-conforming use, which is not what we're asked to do, or you can actually swap or exchange or trade one non-conforming use for another. But we're not asked to do that either. We're asked to add one non-conforming use to another non-conforming use. The bylaw does not provide for that, and I don't think this board has the jurisdiction or the authority under the bylaw to allow the, the application, and I think that's irrelevant of what the CONSCOM or the Board of Health wants to do. I don't think we could do it even if the CONSCOM or the Board of Health said, go ahead. So to the extent that I thought it was a gray area or that I, I held out hope that perhaps we, we, we could because, you know, certainly a business that, that is this well supported in the community, you, you'd love to help them out if you can, That's right. but you can't if you don't have the jurisdiction, and I don't think we do. And I came to that conclusion, let me say, independent of town council. Uh, I'm, I'm not relying on town council, but I do agree with town council. That's it. No, that's that's the way I that's the way I felt when the, when the application first came to us that there's no way we could do it and I had hoped that getting something from Judy Pickett would change that <coughs> and it is it is a shame that our bylaw restricts kennels only to this one district light industry. Business light industry. I uh, I don't I don't understand why the planning board sent you to us. Is that correct? The I planning board didn't send, send us anywhere. We filed our application. Okay. We had nothing to do with the planning board. Did you file anything with the planning board? No. no. Did, did, did you talk to the planning board? No. 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 the video though. If you watch the recorded video you'll see that uh, you know, it, was, it was all a joke. You know when people's lives are invested in this and their profession uh, and all the money that we spent uh, going through this uh, 
you know, and for them to sit there and joke around, one gentleman immediately right off the bat said, nope, I don't know why. The application wasn't even read. I feel that if you went through and you watched the planning board video, you would see how unprofessional it was, especially in my eyes. I was going to write a letter to the board of selectmen mentioning the, uh, how unprofessional the planning board was, laughing and joking about the dogs running loose down the street, when in all actuality it's far from being a very laughing matter. Okay, especially at 11 o'clock at night when you have a dog that doesn't want to get up or move. And you have to call the owner and say, look, um, so I called Matt Callahan on his cell phone, 11 o'clock at night, or take him to Bulger, I get this old dog, this 14 year old shepherd, you know, get him all wrapped up, put him in the back, take him to uh, Bulger's, and passes away two days later. You know, you have situations like that. You have emergency situations in the middle of the night. You have a client in Newburyport having a heart attack, you know, and they call us, the wife calls us, Mark, can you come and pick up the dog at midnight? Yes, I will. You know, I'm going to pick up the dog and bring that dog back home and calm it down and take care of that dog for as long as I need to and wait for their call and hope that everything works out. It's a lot of caring, compassion. A lot is put into it, you know? And I just find out that my wife's right in. Well, so that's another thing that's going to be on my plate, too. Uh, I was really impressed with how the board of selectmen handled their discussion. And uh, I am more than willing to receive the information that you wanted to give me for further review and try to see if I can meet all the necessary needs that you want me to. I, I, don't, I don't think it's, uh, as I explained to Tom earlier, said that, you know, Con, Con, Con doesn't play into this on our end. The Board of Health doesn't play into it, but they've alluded to obstacles that you're going to be faced with. Yeah. That's all we're trying to bring, bring out. Yes. So okay. I, I was hoping that quite possibly I would come here, see that you would be in favor, and then we would take the next step. Because I went to the building inspector, mentioned that I wanted to do retail, offer leashes and dog food to our clients. Well, I have another company, a tired dog is a good dog. I had that trademark with the USTPO, uh, and I ran a print of 50 shirts and sold them. I was like, well, this is a good thing. A tired dog is a good dog. I had that trademarked. Um, the Hyatt Corporation called me uh, pertaining to the name the Hydrant Regency. They weren't too happy about that. They sent me a list of demands. So we talked for three months back and forth. And then when it came down to it, I said, uh, I'm not gonna agree to s uh, sign any terms and agreements. All I'm gonna agree to is that I'll just take care of dogs and you take care of humans. And that was it. You know, I just hope that we maybe we can all get along and work together so that way we can go on to live our dream and service the community, help those that do need to be helped. Because I'm not gonna close my door on anyone. I have a lot of senior citizens that can't afford the boarding, end up in the hospitals or the care facilities. And those who know us know how we are. We will take care of that dog and not ask for anything in return. I feel it's a part of my job to take care of others, those that need to be taken care of. And I'm just hoping that maybe the board can see my compassion how dedicated I am. I, uh, For two years, I've been wanting to stay in Raleigh. And I'd run around, and I'd run out of the building, and say, oh, is this a good location? Oh, is this a good Oh, no. Finally, I got a yes. And that's why I'm here today. That's why I'm here today. And then I was told to see the planning board. And 
I went over there. And then it's like, okay, well, I gotta call Alan. I need some help. Because the lady, I guess, who left and went to work for another town said, uh, I don't know if you want to do this or not. It's going to be long. You know, they're going to go ahead and get you with everything. Okay. I'm here. And all these laws, we've made up all these laws. We've voted for these laws, right? Because a lot of the times, or some of the times, these laws are going to affect people's lives. So... I think I've said enough. I have a lot more to say, but. but Mark, Mark. Yes, sir. I think. I think. I'll speak. I'll speak for the board. Now the board hasn't voted anything. I know. I will speak for the board. I think all of us wish there was a way we could do it. Okay, well then, uh, what can we do next? Does the town have any property? Is there anything? Anything at all? I mean, if you want to help me, I'm here. For about a year, I've been running to the building inspector's office looking at different properties. You know, oh, well, you know, uh, that, that barn has to be moved back to 100 feet. You don't want to buy that. You know, someone else in another office would tell me that, right? And I see someone come along and by the, the property, barn's still sitting there to this day. I mean, you know, <laughs> you said no. I was approved by the building inspector, and I believe that's who you go to first for this property. You know, what other option do I have? Move out of town? Yep. Move out of town. That's going to be sad. Really it is, because if you think about it, I bring people from all around. Connecticut, Rhode Island, New Hampshire. They all come here. It's real. I have people from North End who come right here. They shop, everything else. I bring revenue to the town. The problem, sir, is that <clears throat> we try wherever possible to grant what someone needs. However, in this particular case, we would be going against the law and we would be ruling against the law. And I can assure you that <clears throat> if we make a ruling such as this, against the bylaw, against what town council has told us is the law, that if we made the ruling, there would be an appeal from the town. And when you get into these things, these things can take years, and everything will be hung up. We'd like to, I personally would like to see you be able to go in there, but you can't, because the, the bylaw says that there cannot be a kennel at that location. How much time have you got? What do you mean? How, how much? How much time? I understand you. You're being evicted. I'm not being evicted. I understood that the people that own eviction is a pretty nasty word. Yes. I can answer that. that. That's I'm the person who owns the house, okay. and I also have a question. Um, which, which house? Where? The house where he lives, where the kennel is now. Uh -huh. Okay. And Just for the record, because you're on the record, we want to identify. One of my questions before we get into that is um, if a kennel is only allowed in the light industrial area, why are there several kennels in town that are in people's houses, like where he is now, and several others? 
areas. That are chemists. They're not in light industrial areas at all. And they all have chemicals. That's because they were there prior to the zoning. Mm, I don't think so. Not in my case. Weathersfield Street was never zoned for light industrial. It's, it's a residential area. And that's where the kennel is. And I know several yes, others. Yes, but the, the bylaw by changed two or three years ago or whatever. Changed to what? To, to Wait a not allow kennels in the, to allow kennels only in the light industry area. That was a few years ago? That was a few years ago. Okay. 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 Mm -hmm. when, when you, when he was first there, that was in the outlying district. And uh, you could have a kennel anywhere. No, I had to get a special permit. It was not allowed in that area. I had to get a special permit to get a kennel license there. Back in 1993 or four. Okay. So it wasn't outlying, it was residential and it needed a special permit and we got it. When the outlying district were first established, you could. That was established way back. It wasn't outlying, it was resi residential and I had to go before wherever we went before and got a special permit to have a kennel. Okay, in the you, area. you say it was residential. Right. That's not outlying. That's right. That's what I'm saying. It's not outlying. Yeah. Okay. But at the, at the time that you did that back in 93, mm -hmm. uh, you were legal. You had a kennel license right. and, and it was allowed in that area. Today, it's not allowed in that area. He's grandfathered. You get to stay. He's, he can stay there as long as. And I understood that. I heard somewhere that uh, he was being evicted. And, okay, I'll and tell you exactly what's going on with that. And, and that uh, uh, you wanted to move back into the house. It's a bit of a long story, but I'll make it short. Um, eight years ago, when they moved into the house, a friend of mine died, and I was a legal guardian for her children. So I moved into the house where the children lived. She was a single mom, and I've been in that house for eight years raising those kids. They're now off at college, and I would like to move back into my house, because that house where we are with the kids is going to be sold, and they need to move back into my house. Mm -hmm. So, um, Mark is not being evicted. He has... I told him in March of last year, so we're coming up on a year, I told him in March of last year that he, I knew that he had to gather money to get the kennel project going. And I called him and I told him that he was a guest in my house and he was not paying rent anymore until he found himself a place to go. So I have been paying the mortgage on that house for him since last March and that is far from being evicted. And I would really love for him to be able to move along to somewhere else so that I could move back into my own house. Okay. All right. So the story that I heard was... Was incorrect. Was incorrect. And the victim's a pretty and harsh, and harsh and word. I'm, and I'm glad to hear that. I think your next move is to get a petition to the planning board to change... The use law? The law. It's going to take you next spring. At least, at least, really. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, you probably have a couple options. That's one. Um, and there's no fait accompli that something's going to occur just because you want it to occur. Uh, there, there may be other issues that come about surrounding that kind of a change that that'll surface that could preempt you at that point. That's one scenario. The other scenario is given as Chairman, in my opinion, as Chairman Thurston has outlined, the board's hands are tied here. I mean, it's clear your services are valued by all of those who have been patrons. You, it's clear you have an intent, and I think everybody in the board understands it, to continue providing those services and that you're well received in the town. I certainly don't remotely question any of that. I personally do have reservations about this site because it seems to me there are septic and con-con issues that even if we had the ability 
to grant you this, and our hands were not tied by the law, as has been pointed out, that you might still run into some hurdles. But that's more your issue than exclusively our issue. Because even if the board were able to grant you the zoning permit that you needed, it's conceivable from what I read, and I don't, I may not really fully understand it, that the health department's criteria for your septic needs would prevent you from being able to make it the way you want to do it. I don't know, that's for you to work out with them. I'm personally uncomfortable with granting permits for any use that has real question of having a site not being able to be set up to operate that way. Usually, uh, I would be more inclined to say, we'll only grant this use condition upon you getting approvals from the others. And we would be happy to do that. And we would be happy, I think, if we could do that, to give you the time to make that happen. Go work with the board, you know, here. Go get, find out from them. That's why I sent you this information last month. I wanted you, Mark, do me a favor. Go talk to the Board of Health. Find out what they're gonna tell you. If you could have come back and said, listen, I talked to them and they said, here's what you gotta do, we can do it. And then you can say to me, you know all the money that I have already put into this, et cetera, et cetera? I need some extra bucks, but I can do it, because I wanna do it. Okay, good. Fine, that means you're going to be able to go ahead. There's a lot of ifs there. CONCOM has a lot of ifs. That notwithstanding, as Nat said, town council has now pointed out that we just don't have the right and the jurisdiction to even grant this. Your other option is to appeal that decision. You could do that. I'm not an attorney. That gentleman is an attorney. I don't think if you appealed it, you would actually win the case, but you can appeal it. But appeals equally can take a year and a half to two years before they're even heard. So I, I, it, to me, I've been an independent business owner for 35, 40 years. I just think this isn't the best site for you. And if there isn't another site in the light industrial district that you think you fits as well, because you have a unique situation. You want to reside in a business area. That creates a bit of a dilemma for, for conforming, non-conforming fits and stuff like that. You know, you, you might... But the, but, the prob but the problem is, is you can't live in the light. Right. 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 Exactly. That's, that's the that's, dilemma. That's why, that's why I didn't say the bylaw needs to be changed. Right. Can I just ask you, when you asked um, how much time you had, where were you going with that? Uh, that's what I didn't, well, I think. Well, uh, we have an annual meeting in May. Oh, I see what you mean. Okay. In the spring. Yeah. But it had to be on up for the, yeah, um, I'll call the it ballot, but there's a warrant in the town facility. article, there's a deadline, yeah. like February. Yeah. So That's not the problem. Done. The fact that right. the town can't do anything right. until the planning board recommends it. Brings it up. Right. Brings it up. Right. And they have to, quite a project process that they have to go through. Mm -hmm advertising and so forth, then hearing and back and forth. I don't think they've got time to do You'll it. not be able to do it this spring. Right. Yeah. So if, if they found something in a light industrial area, um, they would have to go before somebody to be able to live there, or is it an absolute no that you can't live there? Uh, unless there's something that's been grandfathered already. Okay. So so it's pretty much no, you can't have a can. So you can't have a kennel in Raleigh that's going to be a, a well well attended over yeah, that so kennel. It 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 it, it, it can't be a kennel where a resident yep. exists uh, on the site. Yep. Un unfor unfortunately, there are very few properties in the light industry because that is suitable. That's you don't want one anyway because you can't stand up. Well, that, that would not prohibit employees. Right. From, 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 from being on the site, site. overnight. Right. 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 You right. just can't live there. So you, you could staff it, there. but you can't live there. You could have a club. No, oh, oh, I mean, that's expensive. Right. I, you know. yeah, that's not right. It's nice to have it. No, you, 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 you have a very unique situation. And, and I, I, you know, I understand you're able to do what you, the way you do. Yeah. Curiously, and maybe you saw this as well, in the Globe about two weeks ago, three weeks ago, in the north section, uh, across the entire North Shore, you know how they do the stats, you know, how
how many motorcycles per capita, how many dogs per capita, across the entire North Shore of about 40 towns. Rowley, tiny little Rowley, has the highest per capita of veterinarians. It's a very unique statistic that this town is far and away, per capita, the highest. Part of it is because we're such a small town, but it's an interesting stat that that's there. So clearly there are a lot of people that come to this town for animal services because there's so many vets here. But I think the way these, these facilities ends up being operated is they're not resident based except those that might be grandfathered or exist because I, I drive it around too and I go, what's it doing there? But there's a lot of businesses like that yeah. that are grandfathered in this town, <clears throat> you know, that are in purely residential districts. Um, and, and and it's and I and I I really think that uh, uh, the dog dog care facility really wasn't addressed when they redid the bylaw. If you know what I mean, I mean it was well. Let's put it here. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't I think understand. let's bring that up for discussion. Because to do it right, you need yeah. to live there. Yeah. I know yeah. what you're talking. I don't know well enough what you're talking about about a dog because I used to have to take our dogs to a place and we get the dog back. No way can you tell the dog, look, I'm coming back. But you can pick up that dog two or three days or four days later and you go through a whole process of getting, getting the dog back in shape so, again. Yes, and what we do is we yeah. offer our clients to come back multiple times at no charge. Okay, no yeah. one else does this stuff. Only yeah. we do it because we sit there and we think, "What is it like to be you? What is it like to be the dog?" Yeah. Okay, and you have to put yourself in them in their shoes. And you get that one dog that's in the corner trying to bite us. Okay, I'm gonna leave him alone and let him be, and I'm gonna go about my business. And then eventually he's gonna come around. He's gonna sniff. He's gonna study me. You know, see, and and. Then the comfort comes out, and then they, you know, get close. The thing is, and then the parents come, pick them up, okay, bring them back two days later, and then it happens. You know, they come back four or five times. Before I know it, the dog's wanting to get right through the door. It's like, see you later. After that, the dog's just having a blast. We got the camera set up, you know, that records everything. I put on my snowsuit. Oh, I love going to sit out there in the snow with the dogs and play around. It's fun. And it's nice to have the home right there. I can cook the meal. The baby can be addressed. Um, there's so many things that can happen. Uh, it's just amazing. It really is. But the, 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 the comfort, the security of being on this site. <laughs> that's what that's that's what makes your business what it is. Yes, very very I, true. I, I recognize that. Yeah. Thank you. It is where you are. And and I I I want to stay in Raleigh, and I understand that it's a little tight around here on land, uh, <laughs> and and you know certain properties that were zoned industrial may have become homes for. Uh, uh, homes plus you add in low income quite possibly I, I don't know how those work you know a little a little give and take there but it, it, I wanted to be able to stay in, in this town this is where my plots are this is where my mother's buried and 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 I love this town I know everyone I have my little routine every morning that I do um, and how long have you been here I know you've told us, but I don't recall. Uh, I would say uh, close to 12, 13, 14 years. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I understand my great-great-grandparents went to school here. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Then they went out to Chicago and oh. all over the place. And then we came all back this way. And then I left, lost my mother and my sister probably six months ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, then... Yeah, so it's just I just want to stay here in this town if I can. I understand. And I don't I want to wear my welcome yeah. out with with Jen and Kathy. I do. Yeah. 
as they're trying to help us. Um, I don't know if the town has any property for sale. <laughs> what can I do? Go somewhere else. I mean, is it have you investigated any of the surrounding towns? To see whether or not their zoning regulations permit. Oh, Newberry would probably take me with open arms, possibly. What possibly I, won't work for you. No, no, but we were we were looking at a farm. On one egg. Iron Moonstone Farm or Moonstone Farm. We were looking at oh, that. Iron Moon Farm. Yes. Yeah, I yeah. know. It's in it's as you go down the slope into Newberry. Yes. Yeah. Not too on far from Wonderful tender crop, where, you know, yeah. all the great food. Mm -hmm. uh, Mark and Matt, um, right there, uh, just on the other side uh, of the border, right there at Ipswich, across the street from the driving range. There's seven acres of land. It's all cleared. Used to be uh, getaway cottages. Yeah, years ago. Years ago. It's been vacant for years. Yes. Yeah. Now they have a little brown house yeah. right there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the single structure. Yeah. Yeah, being they sell junk out for us. Yeah. Yes. That's an option. Well, I, it, if, 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 I don't know if those are actual yeah. options for you. Then, then what is going to be the option? See, no one, no one has the magic to make my life easier for me. My high blood pressure, you know, all the worries that I go to bed with every night. I shouldn't have to be burdened with all of these weighing concerns of where I'm going to go next. I remember when I was seven years old and my parents lost their business and we were homeless in the soup kitchens where the mental hospital would have an open room, a vacant room, and they'd put us in this room, the steel door, okay, and then clunk. You'd hear people screaming in the middle of the night. Sleeping in the back seat of a car, the soup kitchens, the stale sandwiches. That's where I was when I was seven. As far as I'm concerned, that's the greatest gift that my parents could have ever given me as a child. Because it taught me to be a better person and to appreciate. So. Here it is, Christmas is coming. We're looking to start a new family. What am I gonna tell my wife when we get home? See? I, I, I think you need to talk with your current landlord. <laughs> they need their home back. That's what I they understand. want. You've got to talk with them. There's nothing you know, so what do I do? Fold up my business, say, okay, I'm out of business. Huh? You gotta keep looking. I mean, you go to the right. town. I mean, you can't. You know, we've been looking ever since day one. With all due respect to yeah. them, they've yeah. been so helpful. I mean, our, our hands are tied by the zoning law, so I mean, we can't. You know, there's nothing we can do. To be honest, there's no sense. No. That's a shame. Yeah, it is. Okay, gentlemen, if you got a vote, vote. Thank you. Yeah. Anyway. I make a motion um, that the board uh, authorize uh, the creation of a uh, uh, decision uh, to deny the application submitted uh, under the uh, conditions of 521 that would prevent the board from allowing this use uh, as that of a kennel in the um, retail district. Second it. Okay, roll call. Well, I don't think I'm on this one. I'm not on this case. But you're not on? No, 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 no I would be. No. Well, what case are you talking about? Okay, no, I, I thought I thought they was in here was. last month. No, he was in here. Okay. Mr. Chairman, just, just to clarify, 
an I vote is to deny the application. That's correct. Mm -hmm. I. 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 It hurts me to you to say that. It really does. I wish there was a way. And I think what needs to be done is by election. Sad. That's all I have to say. It's unfortunate. It really is. Thank you, gentlemen. Have a good night. Thank you. Have a good night. Yeah. Off the block. 